in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are men who fear God too much to give you cunningly devised fables. The things that you hear by the grace of God are the things we have seen, the things we have heard, and by grace, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life. Number two, the second key to being a light, even a light to the nations, is faith. The law of faith. Faith is a prerequisite for manifesting the glory of God. What is faith? The name given to the action of obedience you take that is a reflection of your conviction. The name given to the action, not the believing. The believing is not faith. The action you take to support that believing is what the Bible calls faith. I am believing God. Correct, but it's still a journey. You've not manifested faith. Faith is the name, I repeat please, given to the action. We have our lovely protocol people stationed across this beautiful auditorium. Imagine with me for a moment that I called on one of them, say the gentleman in front, and I say, sir, come. And he keeps saying, I am coming, and he does not come. Has he obeyed? Is he manifesting faith? So there are many people who keep saying my life is great but they keep saying it in disobedience and they keep recycling disappointments forever faith in one word is obedience faith in one word is obedience no matter what you do that you call faith if it does not culminate to obedience it is not bible faith god is only committed at the point of obedience if it be thou bid me come he said come and peter began to walk he was not walking on water you can't walk on water he was walking on the word of god the word of god was defending him while he was walking it looks like he was walking on water you try walking on water and see what happens it couldn't have been water he was walking on the word hallelujah so you want the glory of god for instance to be revealed in your finances just claiming the promises will leave you in disappointment you have to understand the principles that god has put and obtain grace to walk in keeping let me give you a few of them number one is called the law of diligence it says that a diligent hand shall be made fat so if you are not diligent you are going to be poor it's as simple as that number two it says there is he that scattered and yet withholded more than his meat there is he and and then it tends to poverty ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 2nd Corinthians 8 and verse 9 that even though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 it says this I say he that soweth sparingly he shall reap sparingly he that soweth bountifully he shall reap bountifully it says every man as he has proposed in his heart so let him give is that true not grudgingly or of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver verse 9 says verse 8 now it says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you will abound to every good work these are principles so the believer who wants to see the glory of God revealed in his finances will not only claim the promises but find the responsibility component of those promises and now obtain grace to begin to walk in keeping with them. I repeat one more time that faith is obedience. For instance, 
the Bible says the keys that control longevity. Number one, it says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, and I advise that you choose life. How do you choose life? Number one, by verbalizing it. Number two, by walking in keeping with the principles that lead to life. Then number two, he says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. It says that you may live long and that it shall be well with you. So as you honor your parents, both physical and spiritual, you are programming longevity. Number three, he says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That means if you are alive and you are not declaring the works of the Lord, you do not qualify for another life. That your longevity is predicated upon your usefulness to the kingdom. If your life becomes such a plus to the kingdom, God's jealousy defends you that this kind of vessel needs to live long. Hallelujah. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Faith. It's important that we learn to walk by faith. And I hope you know that when it has to do with faith, you cannot take the word of God out because the word of God is the basis for faith. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says that by him or through him all things were made and without him was not anything made that was made. That means outside of the word nothing can be made. The word of God is the maker. The maker of destinies. The maker of all kinds of good things. When you reject the word of God, and you do not have an appetite for the word of God, there is no possibility for faith to be built in you. And according to scripture, there are four levels of faith. You may just write for your understanding and then I talk about the last point and we wrap up. Number one, there is a realm of no faith, zero faith. It is possible that a man can have zero faith, no faith. That means no kingdom results whatsoever. Number two, little faith. Number three, great faith. Number four, exceeding great faith. All these four levels were seen in the life and the ministry of Jesus. No faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. So when our Father in the Lord stands here and says, can I bless you? And he says, may God bless you. And you begin to hear testimonies. I guarantee you, those faith levels are like currency. $1,000 cannot buy a house of a million dollars. Am I right on that? Mm -mm. So if your faith for use of expression is just a thousand dollars worth and what you want to purchase is ten million dollars worth, you will have to grow your faith. Many believers are claiming things and dimensions that their faith level cannot purchase. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing 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 and now you grow to a realm of exceeding great faith and you can command supernatural possibilities in the kingdom that leaves you becoming inexperienced a light number three was someone learning tonight so the first is an experience with god the second is your faith, robust faith that is able to bring the manifestation of the word of God to you. Number three, the third key that is responsible for becoming the light in experience is called the anointing. Hmm. The anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus emphatically, having mentored the disciples for a period of three and a half years, he emphatically forbade them 
from living until they were empowered. You would think that having the correct information was enough for them to be witnesses. He said, Tari, I give you a precaution. If you live with just information, you will be disappointed. There is an engracing that must come to empower what you know. Tarry until ye be endued with power. Then the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. In fact, from verse 7, the disciples, when Jesus rose again, you know the story. He gathered them and was together with them for a period of 40 days. And then 10 days after was Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 now says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And he says, that power will make you witnesses. Another expression for light. A witness is a validator of a claim. He says, he shall make you witnesses. In Jerusalem, he says, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So they obeyed faith and they waited patiently. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, having obeyed his voice and tarried, the Bible says they were together in one accord, suddenly, ah, like it will happen to someone this night, like it will happen to someone this week, suddenly, suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, came and filled the room, and the Bible says they saw cloven tongues as of fire. It came and rested upon every one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The result of that encounter, 3,000 people coming to Jesus. When Peter was done with them, teaching them, he said, this is that. And he began from prophet Joel down to David and then to the ministry of Jesus. He says, let it be known unto you that the same Jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. Scripture records that they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He says, repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you to your children your children's children even as many as the lord your god will call three thousand people as a result of empowerment they never had that kind of result when he sent them two by two when he sent them seven by seven they only came and said demons were subject to us in your name but nobody could be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son but when the Holy Spirit came with that power, 3,000 people, you know what it means for 3,000 souls to be open to receive Jesus. And that began the journey. In Acts chapter 10, the salvation of the Gentiles, Peter beckoned by the Spirit to come to the house of Cornelius. The Bible says, while Peter spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell upon all they that heard him. That was where the salvation of the Gentiles began. When you ignore the anointing of the Holy Spirit, your life will never be supernatural. You will never in truth be a sign and a wonder. And you will never truly manifest as light. Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Now, I tell you the truth, the anointing is not just for preachers. I think I said it in, in one of my teaching sessions that for most people, when we talk about empowerment, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit usually people who are not preachers just shut down on it and they say no you just leave that for pastors and you know they are the ones who really need it I'm a businessman what do I need the anointing for I just need partners I just need a policy that supports my growth no 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 it takes power even wealth takes power is there not something called the power to get wealth there is the wisdom to get wealth, but there is the power to get wealth. Wise men get wealth. Strong men retain wealth. It's in the Bible. Hallelujah. There are two biblical ways to receive the anointing. Let me wrap up with this. You want to become the light? You want to manifest as light? Now watch this. 
the candle that gives light has potential to continue to burn but that candle remains barren and unfruitful until you use a matchstick or whatever device to place light on it but the moment light comes it starts to burn and it can burn for hours and hours and you will think the candle should be tired it will burn for hours the light only stops when the candle itself dies am i right on that so you are that light do you know light does not get tired no it is the bulb that gets faulty light itself does not get tired the sun that you see is older than everybody seated here yet the sun has never said i'm tired i've tried i've been shining for so long it is not in the character of light to be weak light does not become weak light does not become weary there is a self-sustaining strategy within light that keeps it shining empowerment number one the first way we are empowered in the kingdom is by a direct encounter from god very very important for us to know this that a man can have an encounter with the god of the bible and from that encounter you can receive empowerment Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 i will always like people to read the first four verses if we can see it projected please let's read together acts chapter 10 38 the first four words first four words ready one to read one more time one more time who anointed Jesus God can anoint men how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Solomon Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings and the Bible would tell us that he had an encounter and God asked him to make a wish and he prayed for an understanding heart as against the life of his enemies and he said because you asked for this i will give you an understanding heart and with it will come riches wealth and honor as no man has had he got up you would think he was an ordinary man except that his life began to change the excellency of wisdom the manifestation of power the order that followed his life were testaments that he had received from god i'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus Christ there are dimensions of power that your destiny needs at this point whether in business whether in ministry whether in family may you have an encounter with God that translates to power in the name of Jesus Christ when Jacob had an encounter with God power was the result of that encounter the impact of that power was so strong that his name was changed from Jacob the cheat and the supplanter even unto Israel. Hallelujah. So the first key is an encounter with God if you desire power. The second and the final key that I would give us is through a mystery called impartation. Please write. Impartation is a transference of grace. You can receive an impartation of power from those who truly carry that grace. When you study the parable of the ten virgins, the Bible says that the five, they were all virgins. But the mistake was that all of them had the lamp. And the lamp was signifying the word of God. But a, a number of them did not face the issue of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and power they did not contend for sufficient power it took the oil for the lamp to keep burning so for the other five when the lamp went off the advice they received is go to them that sell and buy that means there are those who sell there are custodians of that oil as scarce as the oil looks there are men who have it in abundance he said, find them, take the responsibility. And we are so fortunate to have in our midst tonight men and women with proven graces. These are men that are custodians of the power of God. Let me admonish you in advance 
that as our mother and our father come and stand here to speak prophetic blessings please do not be familiar open your heart and receive they have proven through their lives that they are the them that you should go and buy how do you buy? You buy with the currency of hunger. You buy with the currency of meekness. You buy with the currency of humility. You buy with the currency of discernment. Go to them that sell. I lack wisdom. Go to them that sell with their results showing and buy. I lack favor. Go to them that sell. Did the Bible not say follow them who through faith and patience what is a prayer point for you has long been someone's manifestation every result is governed by graces the house you want to buy there are people who have bought hundreds of them tens of them there is a grace listen once results are sustained they are sponsored by a grace you cannot have sustainable results by luck and I can tell you our parents in the Lord here and I, this is not just some preacher trying to act political for, for want of word I can tell you that their lives are testaments that by their covenant and their sacrifice with God they have become them that sell them that sell them that sell hallelujah Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He says, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. There are results that when you see, whether you use the lens of intellect or the lens of spirituality, you will arrive at the same conclusion. God has to be with you to produce some results. If God is not with you, there's no amount of gimmicks and manipulation. It can only go so far. Sustainable, decades-old result is proof that an anointing has come upon you. Let me stand upon their grace tonight to speak over someone in the name of Jesus. That barrenness of power, that barrenness of grace, wallowing around in confusion, whereas you belong to a family of power. In the name of Jesus, let grace come upon you. Let power come upon you. Let grace come upon you. Let power come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, power in business, power in ministry, power in career in the name of Jesus please sit down we're wrapping up I have about five minutes or so why do you need power because there are wicked forces that are determined that your destiny will not rise I hope you know that the Bible tells us that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness Apostle, but I did not offend anybody. The condition to be attacked is that you are born. Once you arrive here, you are a candidate for an attack. What did Jesus do to be attacked? What did Moses do to be attacked? Just because Moses was born, many children lost their lives. Satan is that determined to find you. He is that determined to look for your destiny. Apostle, I don't know why it looks like the doors, the gates of America has just been closed. I'm a sincere person. I love God. People want to help me. But just when it's time to seal the deal, it looks like an invisible force comes. You are right. And it will remain so except power comes into the scene. The language of victory is power. The language of victory is power. One more time. The language of victory is power. Listen. Psalm 66 and verse 3. My Bible says, Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works. It says, Through the greatness of thy power, not the greatest of thy sympathy, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very, very quickly, I have the honor to make an altar call and then we're set for the next session. There are people here who are truly yet to make Jesus Lord of their life. Remember, I told you that the foundation for being the light is a genuine encounter 
with Jesus Christ. I'm not just talking about those who come to church, as wonderful as that is. I'm not just talking of those who have Christian names, as wonderful as that is. I'm not just talking about those who were born into Christian families, as wonderful as that is. I'm not even saying if you are a worker in church, I'm talking about a practical functional relationship with Jesus and it will be a very costly assumption that among these crowds of people gathered here tonight and the many more who are following online there has to be someone who is saying apostle if you will give me a chance I want to truly make it right with Jesus and then there's another group of people that I will call combined together those who are saying apostle I recall making this decision for Jesus but for whatever reason my life has gone haywire I have drifted into all kinds of compromises but I want to be restored home like the prodigal son if you belong to any one of those categories I will stand in the spirit of our father and make a call one to five wherever you are with the boldness and the determination of an individual who truly wants to be the light I want to beckon on you to boldly to leave your seat and come and stand right in front of the altar here I don't know where you are but I begin my call now one let's celebrate them as they come two are you celebrating salvation come young and old come come male and female come come to Jesus the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away leave your friends leave family come this is a personal affair there's room for you at the cross come three I count five and we begin to pray Jesus is giving you an opportunity to be the light the light indeed the light indeed the light indeed for some of you the salvation of your loved ones is connected to the decision you are about to make four are you still coming apostle I want to come but I'm ashamed I'm afraid of my friends come do not be ashamed do not be afraid Jesus beckons on you he gives you life even life everlasting hallelujah and for those who are following by way of television by way of internet the Lord Jesus Christ is giving you an opportunity to make it right with him the Bible says as many who will come to him keep coming he says he will in no wise cast away listen I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart as you make this decision I'm going to lead you to pray a prayer you are not reciting a poem let this be from the depth of your heart for the Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation thank you I salute your boldness and your courage to stand before Jesus here thank you now hallelujah let me make a request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and please repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus one more time Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe you rose again for my justification. And my king, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, and forever I am a child of God amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for the many who have come to Jesus the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have made declarations of faith and by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I decree and declare that eternal life is yours here and now 
the power to live the victorious Christian life, receive it in the name of Jesus. And from today until forever, you are a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Now, very quickly, I just want to give you an instruction in righteousness. May I request someone direct me? Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I'm asked that you just remain there. Well, thank you. So I'm directed that you are going to be giving cards. There are counselors. Please do well to uh, have the card. Just be patient before you reach back for your seat. Um, uh, they will direct you, but in any case, you are going to get a card. That card would require an information from you. Please do fill it legibly, and that will be given to the counselor so that you can be prayed for and intercession can be ongoing. You will always hear our father say he will keep praying and praying and praying for you. He said, brethren, pray for us. Hallelujah. But I declare you blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And then for the entire congregation, again, I stand one last time upon the grace of our father and our mother, and I declare over your life, indeed, you will be the light. Indeed, you will be the light. Everything that represents darkness in your life, let it give way right now. I call you blessed. I declare that you remain blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.